Good morning, afternoon, and, and evening to everyone joining today. This is Brad Buell, COO here at Broadleaf. Today we'll have the pleasure of learning more about using Broadleaf's search capabilities for both merchandising and marketing purposes with one of Broadleaf's engineers out of our Austin, Texas office, Nick Crum. Nick, thanks for putting this together. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Brad, and welcome, everyone. While we go through today's webinar, please feel free to use the chat feature of WebEx to ask any questions. Just make sure that the questions are posed to all panelists. We'll work to answer all questions at the end of the presentation and demo. And we should note that today's webinar will be shared using the same demo, demo site that you can sign up for yourself at www.broadleafcommerce.com slash demo. We'll have these search features on there shortly, and you can check all of today's features out for yourself, and of course can reach out directly to us at sales at broadleafcommerce.com if you have any e-commerce or content management needs where Broadleaf might be a fit. Well, before we jump into the features, we should note that there's many ways to increase product sales and personalize user experiences when managing search within Broadleaf. Whether your concern is one of discovery or navigation, merchandising, marketing, or just making more money, there's many ways to take the features Nick's going to show us today and create real business benefit. Um, so without further ado, Nick, I'd like to transition it over to you. Again, thanks for joining. Looking forward to it. Hey, everyone. As uh, Brad mentioned, I'm Nick, an engineer here at Broadleaf. I'm here to talk to you guys about the exciting features within Broadly Search. So we're going to start off with some of the basics and an overview of today's topics. So the first thing that we're going to be covering are search fields and managing these fields that customers will search on. Uh, we'll then move on and talk about modifying keyword search results and search redirects. And after that, we'll cover both site-wide and category-specific search facets. And then we'll move on and talk about managing boost rules and really fine-tuning search results to favor certain products. For example, boosting higher margin products higher in search results. And lastly, we'll go over some content targeting features and personalizing content based on user search criteria. During this demo, I will also introduce you guys uh, how the Broadly Sandbox environment allows us to preview results and provides real-time updates to search behavior. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into our workflow and approval process, uh, feel free to check out this other webinar where Brad goes through a demo walkthrough uh, of the Broadly demo and goes through everything about the sandbox environment. It's on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash broadleaf open source. So first off, I want to introduce you guys to our demo environment and show you some of the basics of broadly search. So I'm going to switch over uh, to our demo site over here. So this demo environment we are using today is the same demo environment you can use yourself. This includes both the front-facing site and the broadly admin in the background here. Most of our clients have catalogs with millions of products and thousands of categories. But for today's demo, we're going to be using this small store called the Heat Clinic. We sell hot sauces. So one of the first basic aspects of search is keyword searching. We all do this all the time, just like at Google. So that's what this search box is for here. So let's just go ahead and do an example keyword search. And let's search for the word salsa, because we're, we're looking for hot sauces. So we search for the word salsa. So our first page of results, we get only one product back. Um, one of the cool things about Broadleaf is that it allows you to have dynamic localization on your site. So what that means is that if we go up here to the top and we click on the Spanish flag, it's going to convert everything to Spanish. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. So we click the Spanish flag and bam, there you go. So now we're seeing many more search results because the word salsa matches all these hot sauces when they're in their Spanish language. You also notice that um, we didn't even have to retype and search salsa again. It automatically and dynamically updated the search results. Just as well, on the right side here, uh, the facets also got updated for the new currency. So 
price facets. Uh, these allow the customer to limit and filter the search results to make finding a product easier. We're going to go into more detail on managing facets and creating a new facet later in the webinar. But for now, you can see that if we click this first facet here, the products are sorted based on their price. So you can, as you can imagine, you can pretty much put a facet on any piece of data and apply these facets on both a site-wide and a category-specific level. So now that I showed you guys uh, some of the uh, basics, including keyword searches, facets, and dynamic translation, we're going to move on to cover some of the new features within Bradley Search. So we have found that uh, as a merchandiser, you often want to specify which field a customer's keyword search is applied to. Usually, you don't want the search to only look at the name field, since there is relevant information within the description as well as many other fields. Broadleaf allows you to not only manage these fields, uh, which fields this search applies to, but also create more advanced fields that use powerful matching algorithms. These include things such as partial matching, cinema matching, and sounds like matching. For this next demo, I'm going to show you guys how you can use these tools in the Broadleaf admin to reduce typing errors, improve related search terms, and control alternate searches. So let's go to the demo environment and take a look at some examples. So first, I would like to talk to you guys about some basic search fields. So right now, we have a field such as product name and description set up that a user can search on. So let's search for a product um, that we know we have. Uh, so let's search for sudden. So we see the sudden death sauce here. And let's see if it matches. So the first result is sudden death sauce. So that search matched the word sudden within the name of the product. So pretty simple. But let's say that we notice our customers are often searching for the word jalapeno. Because we're a hot sauce site and they want some, you know, pretty spicy hot sauce and they like jalapenos in their hot sauce. So they search for jalapeno. And right now all they get is one result. Because there's only one hot sauce that has jalapeno in its name, surprisingly. So sometimes we want to be able to match search results even when the search doesn't directly match the name or description. So we have found that matching searches to a list of keywords or tags that the admin manages is very effective at increasing search relevancy. So let's go into the admin and add a new search field on a keywords field and add a keyword for jalapeno to one of our hot sauces. So let's switch over to the admin. Now, you'll notice when we uh, walk through this admin that Broadleaf does allow you to control as much or as little as you'd like. Uh, we mark all our required fields with an asterisk, but we allow admin users to customize much more. For the purposes of, of this demo, I might be skipping over fields that are not needed for our examples, but just know that you can really get as detailed as you want to within the Broadleaf admin. So since we're setting up a search field, we're going to go to the search module here and we're going to click on Fields. So we want to manage fields. Now you can see right now, um, these are the search fields we already have set up. So you can search on manufacturer, product name, model description, long description, etc. Let's go ahead and add a new search field. So we really only have one uh, field to fill out here. We just need to look up and select our field. So we're going to choose the Keywords field. And then we're going to click Save. So we're almost done here. Uh, we have created the field, and it went ahead and it, by default, added a searchable field type as a text field type. Um, because uh, this is a keywords field, and we're going to have multiple values for this field. So we don't necessarily want it to be a text field. We want it to be something like a comma-separated, multi-valued field. So let's go ahead and edit this type and make sure this field is set up correctly. So. So here we go, and uh, here we need to select a field type. So using Solar, we've named these off of Solar's taxonomy. And within the Broadleaf admin, we can rename these to be more user-friendly if needed. But these options here are not to confuse you. I know there's a lot of them. Uh, they are here really to allow you to customize your search results to fit your needs. For the purposes of this demo, uh, we're going to assume that I got a PhD in Solar and I know what these different types mean. 
So our keywords field is actually a uh, comma-separated multi-valued field, which means we should choose comma-separated multi. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save. So now we have a search field set up for keywords, but we don't have any keywords for the word jalapeno. So we need to go to our catalog, and we need to go to our products. And let's go ahead and choose our sudden death sauce product. So let's click this product. So now we're here, and we need to go ahead and go down to our keywords field, and we need to add the word jalapeno. Here we go. Click Save. Perfect. So now we have the keyword field set up, and we have the keyword jalapeno on the product sudden death sauce. So Next, uh, we're going to go ahead and click this preview on site button. So uh, this, is, this is part of this broadly sandbox environment, and we can actually preview these changes before they go to production. So we're going to click preview on site, and just go through that real quick, and there we go. So now we're on the preview environment. So as you can see, we get this cool sandbox ribbon up top to let you know that you're previewing the site. And let's go ahead and do that same search we were doing earlier. So let's search for jalapeno. And bam, there you go. So sudden death sauce now pops up in the search results. It's not just hurting jalapeno. So this, this was a really a very basic example. Uh, Broadleaf Search allows you to get more creative with search fields by providing the ability to set up even more advanced ones, such as partial matching fields, synonym matching, and sounds like matching. For the purposes of, of this demo, I have actually already set up a couple of these fields. If you feel like trying it out yourself, you would follow the same process that we just did with the keywords field. If you have any questions on this process, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to help you. So first, I just want to show you guys uh, an example of searching for uh, using partial matching. So let's, uh, let's say we search for the word insane. We know our customer uh, is looking for the word in, uh, the product in Sandy Sauce, but they don't remember the name. They just remember it was insane or something like that. So they search for insane. Now, if we didn't have partial matching set up, then we would probably only get this first product here because it's the only one that has the word insane in it. But due to partial matching, it does uh, the stem process and it finds that insane is a is a a stem of Insanity Sauce that matches Insanity Sauce. That way, our customer could then go to Insanity Sauce and get that product. Uh, another example is the, of a uh, field we have is uh, sounds like matching. So uh, let's say our customer comes in and they don't spell well and they spell hot, H-A-W-T. And they go ahead and search for that. As you can see, uh, they get, uh, well, we can't spell either apparently, but they get a uh, hot like a habanero shirt, a uh, hot like a habanero shirt, and then they get hop and hot sauce. So hop and hot sauce doesn't have H-A-W-T in it anywhere, anywhere it's description or name, but it matches the word, the H-A-W-T to H-O-T. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we also have synonym matching set up. So one of the synonyms uh, we actually have set up is that spicy matches hot. So if we go and search for the word spicy, we can see that it matches the word hot within the hot sauces. So that's pretty cool. And you can manage the synonyms file, and you can actually set up many different synonym matching uh, depending on your site and uh, what words you know your uh, users are searching. So um, just to kind of go over summary of search fields, uh, Search fields allow you to control which fields keyword searches target. This is, allows you to craft a better user experience with more accurate and relevant search results. So we're going to go ahead and move on to talk about managing search redirects. So at some times, as a merchandiser, you want the customer to be directed to a specific landing page rather than just showing a generic results page because generic search results pages can get pretty boring. So that is where search redirects come in. These allow you to redirect the user to a page of your choosing based on the terms they search. So for this demo, 
I'm going to show you guys how you can use these search redirects to reduce the numbers of clicks for your customers, improve the overall user experience, and better control search outcomes. So we're going to switch back over to the demo environment. Now, earlier uh, we talked about our hot sauce called Insanity Sauce. So we searched for insane, we found Insanity Sauce. Let's say we also often see people search for the word insanity. And we know the only real product uh, people were probably looking for is Insanity Sauce. So let's say that instead of just giving a generic search results page, like we did when we searched insane, how about we send them to a, a product detail page? I actually already have this redirect set up. Um, so let me uh, show you. Let's, let's go ahead and search for Insanity and see what happens. So we're directed directly to Insanity Sauce. All right, so, so that's pretty cool. Um, but let's say, as another example, uh, we saw that um, our users often go to the search box and they search for the word sale because they want to find the cheap deals that they can get on hot sauces. Well, right now we have no, we don't have presence of the word sale in any of our products. That would match the zero search results. However, we added a search redirect to redirect to this clearance category since we thought that's a better landing page than a zero search results page. So let's try this now. I actually set that up. So as you, as you can see, you search for sale and it redirects you to that URL, the clearance page. So these two, these last two examples were examples we already set up. So what if we wanted to go in and set up a new search redirect? Let's say that we looked at our uh, users' uh, searches and we saw they often search for the word hottest. They come to our hot sauce site and they really want to get the hottest hot sauces. So they search for the word hottest. Well, right now, as you can see, all they get is Green Ghost. But what they really want to see is a result of our hottest hot sauces. So let's go to our admin and set up this new redirect to redirect them to a better landing page for that search. So let's go to the admin here. And if we're managing search redirects, we want to go to the search module and we want to click on redirects. And as you can see, uh, right now we have our redirects for sale and insanity set up. Uh, we want a new one, so we want to click on add search redirect. So search redirects take pretty much two essential fields. They take the search keyword and a corresponding landing page for that search keyword. So we know our search keyword, and that is hottest. However, we don't know the redirect URL yet, the landing page. So let's go ahead and go back to the site and figure out a good landing page for the search redirect. So we're back in our site, and we know that we want the hottest hot sauces. So let's go to the hot sauces category. Now we're here. Uh, how do we find the hottest hot sauce here? Well, we have this uh, convenient facet over here called heat range. So heat range, the higher that is, the hotter the hot sauce. So let's choose uh, uh, multiple values for this facet. So we'll choose four and five. We'll submit. It dynamically updates results. And these are all the hot sauces that have a heat range of four or five. So Broadleaf actually has an SEO-friendly URL structure. So really all we need to do is go up to the browser URL and take this last part, starting at slash hot sauces, and go ahead and copy that. This is taking the landing page, and then we go to the redirect URL here, and we go ahead and paste that in there. So now that we have all that, uh, the start date, end date, we can leave as is. Uh, if you want, you can... Uh, set the start date and end date down to the second. For now, we're just going to let it start now and go on forever. So we're going to click Save. And now we got that search redirect set up. So let's go ahead and try this out again. So we'll go back to our demo site. And we'll just start off the home page here. And let's, as a user, search for hottest. And bam, like magic, we are redirected to that landing page. So as you can imagine, you can set up a search redirect for pretty much any page you want. If you have a special product landing page, if you want to uh, set up better search results for your users, 
Um, we just saw how search redirects allow you to uh, do a lot of different things and set up a lot of different landing pages, whether it's a product detail page, a category, or even something more complicated involving faceting. This is a very powerful tool that gives you the power to craft a better user experience on your e-commerce site. So now we've covered search redirects, we're going to move on and talk about search facets and managing those. So earlier, uh, we demonstrated how a user can use uh, search facets to filter search results like price, heat range. We have found that facets create a better user experience. And using Broadleaf, you're able to control these all within the Broadleaf admin. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to show you guys how you can use these search facets to reduce the time it takes to find desired products, improve navigational filtering, and control dynamic browsing experiences. So we're going to go back to the demo environment and take a look at the search facets. So we have already seen some facets, like I said, like price and heat range. Let's say that we notice our users often go to the hot sauces category and they want to they want to find hot sauces of a certain brand. But product detail, you know, it doesn't show that much. You actually have to look at the photo or click on the image and go to the product detail page. So right now we do not have a facet for manufacturer, just heat range and price. So let's go ahead and add that facet in. So we're going to go to the Broadleaf admin. And just to let you guys know, I'm going to walk through a more technical example here, and this is going to show off some of the depth of the Broadleaf admin. So we're going to go to the search module and we're going to click on facets. So here we can see our other facets, such as heat range and the price facet. We're going to add a new one. So we'll click add search facet. Now there's a bunch of different fields here. So the first field, this is name. So this is kind of uh, what you're going to see in the admin. It's, it's for you to keep track of what the search facet is. So I'm going to go ahead and call this manufacturer facet. Now we also need to set up the label. So this is what is going to be visible to the user on the site. So we're going to go ahead and call that manufacturer. Now we also need to set up the facet field type. So like I said earlier, um, there's a lot of different options here. Uh, for the purposes of this example, we're going to choose string because the manufacturer is a string field. Uh, so we're going to choose string for this one. And we need to go ahead and set up the field as well. So we'll choose manufacturer. Now uh, global. Uh, so if you want this facet to be site-wide and show up when keyword searching, you would make it global. For right now, we are going, not going to make this global since manufacturer only applies to products within the hot sauces category. So we'll click no. And you might want to use facet ranges if you have multiple options on something like price and you have a range to specify. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, we do not have a facet range. And lastly, we, we need to go to this advanced tab. So look, the only important thing on this advanced tab in our example is that we are allowing multiple selections. That way the customer can select multiple manufacturers when they are uh, browsing the cat hot sauce category. We don't need to set up facet ordering and or require any dependent facets, so we will just leave those as is and we'll click save. So now that we've added this hot search facet, we're almost done. We next need to make sure that this search facet is set up for a certain category. So we need to go to categories, and we need to click on our hot sauces category. Now that we're here, we have a bunch of tabs to choose from. We're going to choose the facets tab, and we're going to add a category search facet. And we're going to choose manufacturer. Perfect. So now it's out of the category. So now, finally, we got everything set up. So we're going to go ahead and go to our preview of the site again. Uh, let's just go to the home page and let's go and see what happens when we go to hot sauces. And what do you know? There is manufacturer facet on the right side of the page. So pretty cool stuff. So we can click on here and we can click like, let's say we want to look at spice exchange products. Well, we can click on spice exchange and as you can see, all these products are Spice Exchange products. 
So pretty cool stuff. And just as well, you can choose multiple facets if you really want to. For an example, we'll clear this facet out. And we'll choose a couple here. Perfect. So Broadleaf gives you a ton of control over the facets for both searching and browsing categories. Uh, this feature allows you to create a better user experience by giving your customers tools to find the products they desire. So we're going to go ahead and move on and talk about um, boosting product placement. So a common need is to be able to control the order of search results. Sometimes as a merchandiser, you want to prefer certain products over others, such as showing higher margin products before lower margin products. Or perhaps you have a new product line that you want to promote. I'm going to show you guys a couple examples of how you can use boosting in search relevancy to reduce manual ordering efforts, improve tailored search results, and control pro product placement. So first, let's go over the demo environment. And uh, let's say we wanted to uh, set up a uh, boost. We want to order search results based on margin within the clearance category. So we want to increase our profitability here. So right now, if we go to the clearance category, uh, you can see this is the order of results. We don't have any boost applied. So by default, we have Green Ghost, Blazing Saddle, Dr. Chili Meisters, Bull Snort Cowboy, Hurt and Jalapeno, et cetera. So let's go to the admin and set up a boost rule for this category to boost on margin. So let's go to the admin here. Now, Broadly Search allows you to set up both global and category level boost rules. So global rules are rules that are applied site-wide, and those are applied when you're doing keyword searching. And these are managed under the left nav here, under search and relevancy rules. And category rules are applied when category browsing, and these are managed under each category. So since we're setting up a category rule, we're going to go to categories. We're going to click on clearance. And as you can see over here, there are, is this relevancy rules tab. So we'll click on relevancy rules. And these are where our category boost rules would be. Right now we have none set up, so we're going to click add. So the first thing it's going to ask us to do is select a search field. So for this one, we're boosting on margin. So we're going to select margin. And then we're brought to the additional fields tab. And we need to set up a name. So this name is not really important in the sense that the user's not going to see it. However, uh, I typically use this so I can keep track of my different boost rules. So I'm going to call this one uh, boost by margin. Now, the next thing we need to set up is some relevancy info. So the first thing is the uh, boost rule type. So I got this neat little table help text here to help tell me what it is. But I'm just going to tell you we're going to choose boost by relative value. The reason is, is that this is a numer numeric value. Now, with all this relevancy stuff, the way Solar calculates the score for do documents using boost values is actually very complicated. Uh, if you want to learn more about what the boost values, what boost values is set, you can check out my blog post um, on broadleafcommerce.com uh, slash blog. You can look at the blog post there where uh, I go into more detail on how to set the right scores, how to tinker with it. Um, I personally found tinkering with the, these values and previewing the results is the most effective method. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to choose boost by relative value. I'm going to set the boost amount to 4, and I'm going to set this minimum allowed score to 0 0.1. Minimum allowed score as well, um, that's really important for numeric values because uh, if something has a zero margin or a zero value, that could invalidate its score altogether. So you always want to set some minimum value. And sort by descending, we're going to leave that as the default. Active date range, we're going to leave that as as well. So now that we have this boost rule set up to boost my margin, uh, we're going to click Save. Perfect. So now that rule is set up. So let's go ahead and preview this change on our demo site and see if it uh, changes the search results. So let's go here to clearance again. And now, as you can see, Green Ghost was 
At first, Green Ghost was the very first result. But since we boosted by margin, we can see that Dr. Chile Meister uh, moved up. So it goes Dr. Chile Meister, Hurton Hall, Peno, Blazon Saddle. So this is a, quite a bit of change in search results. Um, so that was a pretty cool example, but let's consider another scenario. Say you were looking to do a new promotion around a new product line made by a certain manufacturer. You want their products to be boosted higher when people are searching. Let's say, uh, let's say we want to do that for the spice exchange. So if you remember earlier, we went here, we did a manufacturer facet, we selected spice exchange. So these are the spice exchange products here. So day of the dead, day of the dead, day of the dead, right? We know they're the day of the dead products. So let's go to the admin and figure out uh, how to set up a boost rule um, on this manufacturer. We'll go to admin here. Now, the boost rule we're setting up here is to promote when manufacturer is bicyc chains. And this is applying to keyword searches. So that means we're going to want a global rule. So we'll go to the search module over here and we'll click on relevancy rules. Right now you can see we have no rule set up, so we're going to click add boost rule. Now, just as well, uh, we need to set up a name. So I'm going to call this name uh, Spice Exchange Promotion. Sounds like a good name. And I select the field. So I'm going to select the manufacturer field. And just as well, we need to select the same relevancy information. Uh, for this one, I want to boost by matching value. Because I want to boost this whenever it matches a value. Um, for the purpose of, of this demo, I'm just going to set this to 0 0.5. Uh, like I said, my blog post, I go into more detail on what these values should be set to and how you can figure out the best boost amounts. And lastly, we need to set up the matching value. And we want to boost when it matches the word spice exchange. So now that we have that set up, we'll click Save. Perfect. So now that we've added this boost rule, let's go ahead and go to the site. And let's do a search for something. Let's say we search for hot. So we know hot matches uh, pretty much almost all our hot sauces via the word hot. Let's search for hot and see how things have changed from earlier. So as you can see, we search for the word hot. And our first three search results are the day of the dead sauces. So it sounds like our boost rule is doing a pretty good job of boosting these things higher in, search, in our search results. So the best way to get the most accurate boost values and for your boost rules is by tinkering with the values and checking the results. Actually, we even provide in the preview environment a visual score when previewing that allows you to see the exact score Solar gave each product when it did the search. So you see this uh, on this ribbon up here, the show search score. Well, if we click show, then you can see this uh, cool little thing, uh, overlay on the product image shows up giving the score for each product. So you can see that Day of the Dead has 0.653, and you know you can kind of see as they go down, they're ranked by that score. So in the blog post, I go into more detail on how you can use these tools to create a powerful set of boost rules. So to summarize, uh, boosting with Broadleaf allows you to customize the ordering of search results to your liking, whether it is promoting a new product line or boosting by margin for greater profitability. This powerful tool allows you to fine tune tailored search results to optimize product placement without having to rely on another service. And uh, like I said, check out my blog. Uh, it's on broadleafcommerce.com slash blog, and the name of it is Conquering the Fuzziness of Search Relevancy. So lastly, we're gonna go over content targeting with search. So Broadleaf allows you to choose which content, ad content, you show based on a user search. This allows you to target the most relevant content to your user base. So I'm going to walk you guys through an example that shows you how content targeting can help reduce the disparity between content and search terms, improve personalized experiences, and control the content uh, links to search results. So we're going to go over the demo environment again and set up a content targeter. So right now, uh, let's say that we, we notice our users go to our website and they search for the word fire often. For some obscure reason, they search for fire. 
just because it's a heat clinic, right? And uh, when they get this page, they get this one search result, and they get this boring ad over here on the right side, get the essential starter kit. They always see that ad. But since they're searching for the word fire, we actually want all of them to see our new snazzy Firecat right-hand ad rather than our current boring one we see now. So let's go to the admin and set up a content targeter to switch out this right-hand side banner ad whenever they search the keyword fire. So let's go to the admin. Now, setting up content targeters is managed in the content section. So the first thing you would need to add a, set this up is you would need to add a content item. I actually went ahead and add this in for us, our right, Firecat right-hand side banner ad. And after you do that, you would move on to set up a content targeter. So right now we have no content targeter set up. So we're going to click Add Content Targeter. And the first thing we want to set up is name. Now going through these fields, content targeting, there's a lot of different options here. Uh, there's a lot of different rules you can set up. There's many different fields on here. Uh, I'm only going to go through a few of them, the ones that are important to this example, but just know you can get really customized in content targeting here. So we're going to call this content targeter for the name field. Uh, we're going to call it Firecat Content Targeter. Sounds good. And we'll skip the description. We'll set an active start date. Done. And uh, we're going to skip these because we don't need a time rule. We don't need to target specific customers. However, we do need a targeting action. So whenever a content targeter meets a condition, we want to show an alternate content item. So we'll click that. And it asks us for a content zone. So we'll do this lookup. And we'll select the right-hand side banner add zone. And lastly, we need to select the content item here. And we'll select our Firecat ad. Now we need to go to the Advanced tab, and there's one last thing to do. So we don't really need any of these options. The only one we're worried about is targeting based on web request attributes. So this is where you would go if you want to target based on uh, the search keyword. So we go here, we click Yes, we add a new rule, and it's already set to search keyword. Obviously, you can choose other things, but let's search, choose search keyword. And we want to show this content item when search keyword is equal to fire. And we'll click Save. So now we have this content targeter set up. Uh, this should be all we need to do. So let's go ahead and go to our site again. And let's just go to home so we can reset everything. And let's search for the word fire. And bam, there you go. So instead of that boring old essential starter kit ad, we get this nice, cool fire cat. You know, he's breeze fire. It's pretty awesome. So uh, this is just a, you know, a simple example, but obviously you can see that um, content targeting is a very powerful tool that allows you to better serve your customers the content you want. Using this, you can craft a more personalized user experience. So if you want to add a hand at any of this yourself, you can sign up for your own demo site, demo site as well at www.broadleadcommerce.com slash demo. Um, all these features will be on there very soon. Uh, that's all I had to show you guys today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, next, we will go ahead and move into the Q&A session, and uh, me and Brad will take any questions you guys have. Thank you. All right, I see some questions coming in. Thanks, everybody. And please, again, address all questions to all panelists. Um, I'm going to take the first couple, Nick. Um, one is a, a fun one. Um, first one is, what's up with all the yelling during the webinar? Um, as we mentioned at the start of the webinar, Nick's in the Broadleaf Austin, Texas office, where even the window washers like to keep it weird. Um, apparently, the only way they can communicate is through screaming at each other. It's part of that downtown Austin experience. So. Thanks for that question. Um, next question related to the webinar, uh, when are these features going to be available and how much does it cost? Um, I'll take this one. So for current enterprise clients, these features are included in your license. They're available now in alpha release. We will move into beta and release stages over the next 45 days. Uh, just reach out to your Broadleaf representative or support. Um, and for those that are interested that are on the webinar in pricing information, 
for e-commerce or content management needs, including search, uh, just please reach out to sales at broadleafcommerce.com um, and we'll, we'll help with any requests that you've got. Um, the next question that I've got, Nick, I think is for you. Um, the question is, can you customize search relevancy and solar querying beyond what's offered in the Broadleaf admin? Uh, the answer to that is yes. If you want to set up more comp, uh, complex and like customized search settings for solar beyond the admin tools I showed, uh, you definitely can. Uh, Broadleaf is very customizable down to the component level. And uh, if there's something that we created that you want to modify or replace, you can definitely go in there and do that. Uh, we do that for client implementations all the time. Okay, great. The next question uh, is, Nick, again for you, in the keywords example, when you searched for jalapeno, uh, if the term had been in the product description, uh, such as a list of ingredients, would the search have found it without adding the keyword as well? Uh, the answer is yes as well. So while the jalapeno example matched the keyword field, if jalapeno had appeared in the description somewhere, it would have matched that product also. Uh, the difference is that because of the keyword field type, comma separated list of strings that we configure in solar, the match on a keyword is treated much higher than a match in a larger block of text like the description. So when it comes to ranking and scoring of results, matching a keyword is much more effective than matching a description. It just so happened in our example that Hallpinio didn't exist in the description in any object. But if we went ahead and added to a description somewhere, then yes, that product would have been displayed as well. Okay, great. Um, next question. Um, how were the sounds like matching examples set up? Were they also mapped with keywords manually? Good question. So the sounds like examples are set up as different solar field types in the solar XML. Uh, solar actually has different tokenizers and algorithms that you can use in order to make sounds like match in different ways. In our example, we are using solar's, uh, it's called a double metaphone filter factory uh, as analyzer filters at both index time and search time. Uh, so that's something that, you know, you could customize in the schema XML to use, a, use different types of sounds like filtering. Hope that answers it. <laughs> All right. Um, here's, a, here's a good one, Nick. Is, is this better than Lucene? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Uh, well, Solar is actually uh, just a friendly API layer on top of Lucene. It's completely built on Lucene. Uh, most of the features that Solar provides are really enabled through Lucene and Solar, and Solar really just exposes those through APIs. So it's kind of a, it's, it's just something laid on top of Lucene, basically. All right, here's an integration question for you, Nick. Is there some way to tie Broadleaf searches and facets into Google Analytics? Okay, good question. So Broadleaf is configured out of the box to send every page hit to Google Analytics. Since searches load a new page with a different URL, each of those search queries will show up in Google Analytics. If you end up customizing this to be more Ajaxy, Google Analytics also has a JavaScript API that you can send general events to in order to capture search queries. All right, um, the next question is about content zones. Can we use the, the targeter feature, so the content targeting, can we use that feature to control any content zone? Uh, good question. So uh, the answer is yes. Uh, you can use the targeting feature to control any content zone. As long as there's a content zone that's set up um, when you manage your content zones, then you can use the targeter to control any of those. And then the next one is, is directly related to that one. Um, it's from another, another attendee saying that they sell services that aren't available to every content, to every zone, wondering if they can filter search based on the information they ask from the customer before they start. So if you've got someone in a different zip code, for example, um, but customers are not registered yet when they search. So is, is that able to you know, filter search based on things like geography? 
Um, yes, that we are capable of doing that. This would require um, be require some program and like coding customization, but uh, content targeting is uh, customizable to work off just about anything from the web request. So cookies, sessions, etc. Yeah, and I'll say as well um, from a content targeting perspective, you could look at our um, at our content uh, webinar as well that we've done in the past. Um, and we go into a deeper dive on content targeting too. Um, there's uh, another couple questions. Can we create custom boost rules? Um, I think that answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can create custom boost rules, yes. And if there's something that you want to do that's even more custom than the, the, uh, the way we have right now, like I said earlier, you can get more customized if you need to uh, within the Broadly framework. And I'll grab these next couple questions. Um, first of all, can you let us know the blog URL mentioned in the video? If you go to broadleafcommerce.com slash blog, um, right now it's the first blog that's on there. It's, uh, the name of the blog, though, is Conquering the Fuzziness of Search Relevancy. Again, Conquering the Fuzziness of Search Relevancy. So if you want to take a look at that blog, it goes into a little uh, deeper um, dive than we were able to do so in this webinar. Um, that's, a, that's a good read for all the technical folks out there. Uh, next question, is this available to Community Edition users? Um, the answer to that is no. Uh, our Community Edition is meant for small, medium businesses and people that are evaluating broadly uh, for our general coding and, and integration. Um, and this is definitely an enterprise uh, feature. And so this is available to Broadleaf's enterprise and multi-tenant customers. Um, next question, can I customize the order of products on the category pages? Yes, of course, you can customize the order of products. Um, since we're in the context of a search webinar, you can do that um, through uh, boosting, but you can also do it just within Broadleaf's content management capabilities based on prioritization uh, or ordering. So there's multiple ways to customize the order of products depending on what you need to do. Nick, I don't know if you've got any additions to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you pretty you pretty well covered it, but uh, you're able to, if, if you don't want to like use boosting per se, or you want a hard, like you want this product to be first, like no matter what in a category, you can definitely set up display ordering in that sense. Uh, by default, uh, we leave that, set, that value set to null, so it does its sorting all based on score. But that is a good question. You can set it up to hard code the order though. And we've got something hot off the press. We actually, you know, as they say, eat our own dog food. We do use Broadly for our website. Um, so we did set a, a URL to Nick's blog. So if you want to go to broadleafcommerce.com slash blog slash search relevancy, um, that's a way to get directly to the blog. So again, we used um, Broadleaf's URL uh, redirect to get directly to the blog, but uh, you could get to blog slash blog slash search relevancy now. Okay, I think that's all the questions that we have. Um, if you do have any more questions, then please feel free to reach out to info at broadleafcommerce.com. We'll be happy to answer any additional questions that you have um, following this webinar or if you're watching this webinar um, as, a, as a playback. So again, feel free to reach out to us at any time at info at broadleafcommerce.com for any questions and sales at broadleafcommerce.com um, for any questions about projects or particular licensing questions. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. We hope you enjoyed it, um, and we will be in touch with you guys soon. Please answer the post-webinar survey if you have just a, another minute of your time. And thank you, Nick. Thanks for your time as well on this. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining in, and check out the blog and everything. Thanks.